Welcome to episode 49 of BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Moppin. And I'm Brett Newcomb. And today we're continuing our conversation about items in the news. And today we're going to talk about the news that has broken that says that HRT patches may be better for people uh, than pills. Yes. And I stopped to, to think about pills because in the information that Kathy puts out on her website, in these podcasts, in the book that she's writing, she talks about all the multiple delivery systems for hormone replacement mm -hmm. therapy. And she has been arguing that there is a hierarchy of effectiveness and safety that has evolved through the development of different delivery methodologies. And she's been a voice in the wilderness. And so then this news <laughs> comes out that says, well, you know what, there's a point to be made here. And it's not as advanced as the point that she typically makes, but it's something that I thought we would discuss. And so you're mm -hmm. familiar with it. This particular article came out on ABC World News, but it was first published in the Journal of the AMA and the Journal of Endocrinology. And what happens is news media constantly uh, surf those kinds of things, mm -hmm. looking for keywords, looking for little tidbits that they can put in the news, news of the day sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily give expansive coverage right. uh, that provides a lot of detail. But so, they do summarize for us. Right. And sometimes the summary to doctors is like, wait a minute, that's not what that study it's said. It's jarring. But in this case, their, their estimation of what this study said is right. Mm -hmm. That the delivery system of a patch that you put, women use patches that have both estradiol and then estradiol and progestin on their abdomen or on their hip, and it does transdermal, meaning on through the skin, absorption. So it doesn't go through the stomach. And I'm gonna talk about that, why it's important that hormones don't go through your stomach, but let me go through the progression. Right. Of all of the of all the types of delivery systems, delivery system really refers to how do you get it into your body? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're delivering it to your body. So the oldest delivery system that is currently known is oral pills. You put the hormone in the pill. You put it. You put it. You swallow it mm -hmm. with water or something, and then it supposedly goes to work. Then we have we've had vaginal delivery systems. Generally, that's, that has never been for um, delivery to your whole body. It's just been to get a little estrogen to the vaginal wall. But in recent years, they've developed a ring that you can put into the vagina for a month to three months, and it delivers estradiol, not pure estradiol, but a type of estrogen to your body for three months. You take it out, you put a new one in, and that's how you do it. Every delivery system that's not oral is better than oral for hormones. That doesn't go for every drug. It only goes really for hormones because here's the reason. Hormones that are swallowed immediately go to your liver and your liver breaks it down into to components. And these components aren't very good for you and they're not pure estrogen anymore or pr pure progestin. They're, they're metabolites that come right. out of the liver. They're metabolites and they never get to your body as a pure hormone they get to your body as metabolites. One of those metabolites in oral estradiol and or oral estrogen and oral progestin is estrone, old lady estrogen that gives you belly fat and, and breast cancer and all those other things. So I've told people for years that if I can get them off oral and onto anything else, then they'll be safer to prevent their bre any breast cancer, especially if they have a family history. So that's, that is my almost as good as pellets delivery system, is the transdermal patches. If we could put bioidentical hormone in that, it would still not be as good as pellets because when it goes through your skin, it changes a little bit and makes more estrone than when you take a pellet. Pellets under the skin, it goes to your body as pure testosterone and pure estradiol. And delivery system is important, but what's in the delivery system is also important. Right. And the hierarchy there goes, synthetic is never as good as pure estradiol and pure testosterone and pure progesterone. So if you're choosing the so, safest so method. So pills are synthetic? Pills are synthetic. And there are a few that aren't synthetic, uh -huh. but because they go through your stomach, 
they they're destroyed. become metabolites and they're not pure again. Right, and then you don't get the good effects and you get some of the bad. So a lot of the studies on all estrogens that kind of damned all estrogens were done on oral pills. Which you weren't pure, they were synthetic. Right. And which were converted oral. to metabolites because they were oral. What about sublingual? Sublingual is a very nice way to take estradiol. It actually, it lasts a day. And, so it's and sublingual means? Under the tongue. Okay. Or in the cheek, they have trochees that go through your cheek or under the tongue. That is a way to get a bioidentical hormone, because mm -hmm. they don't have any of the synthetics made that way yet. Okay. It goes directly into your system and is, is mostly estradiol, but it makes more estrone than pellets or patches. So we're talking about delivery systems, and there are a couple of issues. Uh, three that I'm hearing mm -hmm. you articulate. One is the content of what is delivered, whether right. it's synthetic uh, or whether it's bioidentical. bioidentical. One is the, the method of delivery. Mm -hmm. And the third is what happens, the, the changes or transitions, the, the breakdown of the chemicals as the body starts to process the hormone replacement and distribute it to the locations where it's supposed to be. Right. So you got three different things that mm -hmm. you need to consider when you evaluate these different methodologies and say, which one is best for mm -hmm. me? And some of that depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Like you were talking mm -hmm. about the vaginal ring or the vaginal uh, uh, They delivery. have vaginal tablets. Mm -hmm. Generally, what is approved by the FDA and, and the American College of OBGYN is such a low dose, it's not very good. Uh -huh. At, I mean, at a higher dose, it would be better. You'd have to use three of them to get your vagina wetter and not so and not so dry because dryness causes bladder infections. It causes difficult and painful intercourse. It causes shrinking of the vagina so that it really can't accommodate you for intercourse, even with lubricants. So it has several different functions, but that's all those do. They don't go to the rest so of your body. So they're very narrowly focused right. for a specific outcome. They're mm -hmm. also time referenced. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if you use one of those, you have a window of time where you receive that benefit, mm -hmm. but typically through the day or the week, you don't have that benefit. That's right. It's usually a couple days. It depends on the type mm -hmm. but, or, the, or the company, but it's usually a couple days, and we call it half-life. Any okay. drug is viewed by pharmacists and by doctors as how long is the half-life. You can tell how long the half-life is easily because it's how often we dose it. If the half-life of a pill is every every day right that's it's every day because that's half of it is gone in one day so then you redose so that's how we dose drugs okay. now in a patch some of the patches for estradiol and progesterone there's my uh, my favorite's combi patch because it lasts three and a half days and so you change it twice a week it never really drops the half-life is probably four days so you never really get this drop before you change the patch. Mm -hmm. Other patches are once a week. And oftentimes my patients say, I run out and get hot flashes and feel miserable, you know, the day before I should out. change yeah. it. Well, the day before yeah. I should change it. Right. So in that way, the half-life is really five days and not six or seven days. Right. So the patient's, you know, getting her symptoms back. That's not good for women. It's not good for how we act. It's not good for our health to go up and down. In estrogen. The only mm -hmm. reason that was good, and everybody's out there saying, well, we did that when we had babies, and that's because we were made to have babies. And that's the only reason we go up and down. Mm -hmm. If you look at ideal hormone dosing, men have the same hormones every day when they're young. Every day they make the same testosterone level for that man. There's no moods. That's why I don't have moods. There's no fluctuations. I have moods. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But, you know, I don't think it's from that. Okay. Right. <laughs> but that's, and, and you're not at like 19 anymore. <laughs> okay, not, not to be, make you. I, I have a 16-year-old that has yeah, moods. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, you know, as they start getting their testosterone, they get moods too. But, but once you're established and you're through puberty, then generally you have the same thing every day. That's pretty much the pattern of what, what we should have. So after menopause, we don't need to have babies. Right. We don't need to create an atmosphere of constantly making an egg and getting rid of an egg if it's, and you know, the egg just passes out and dissolves if you're, it's not fertilized. Mm -hmm. So 
we don't have to do that anymore, so we can be more like you guys. Great. We get our hormones. We should have our hormones for health and for psychological happiness every day of the same day. So you need to have a half-life that you can live with. If I tell you, like Suzanne Summers says, and I love Suzanne Summers because she broke in, she broke this into the the Main, eye of patients yeah. and every and mainstream uh, news. She has someone that gives her drops under her tongue six times a day, maybe five times a day, five or six times a day. I don't go to the bathroom that often because I'm too busy and my patients are too busy. You can't have, unless you have somebody walking around and putting the drops under your tongue or if you're obsessive compulsive and do nothing else than but watch your hormones, you can't do that. So I have to think about what can you do? Okay, and so that's why, that's one of the great reasons no, how I'm, let's work. I'm smiling because that is such an atypical lifestyle. I mean, you, know, you talk about people <laughs> I mean, I have needing, an atypical lifestyle? No, no what Suzanne, Suzanne Summers, Summers is talking is. about. Because for most people, I mean, even in a, in a more common domain, when, when they talk about uh, dieting and eating healthy, they talk about eating a little bit every two hours. And mm -hmm. most people can't schedule their day to I'd do that. I have to brush my teeth every two hours then. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but, I mean, you have to do I mean, all those things. Yeah. And so six times a day is just not acceptable for the lifestyle of most women. I can't walk out in the waiting room and say, hey, I'm eating and brushing my teeth and <laughs> putting my drops under my tongue. I you mean, people all just wait. Yeah, you just yeah, wait I'll for me. I mean, yeah. that's just not going to work in most people's lives. Sure. So you always, a doctor should always think, I'm not sure we always do that, about how often you have to do something. So often they, they give pills because it's once a day in the morning and it's mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. Well, that seems good, but it's a much inferior kind of replacement. So pellets are every four months. I mean, you can do that. You can show up at my office, get your, get a, fill up your tank and then leave. And you know, you've wasted an hour every four months, not 10 let, minutes, let, six times a day. Let's talk a little bit about the way that you do those pellets though, because when, when you talk about delivery systems, you, you've talked about taking an oral tablet or pill that you swallow, mm -hmm. you've talked about sublingual, you've mm -hmm. talked about a vaginal insertion, you've mm -hmm. talked about a skin patch. Mm -hmm. And for all of those things, there are absorption modifiers that break it down or change it as it gets into the interior of the body mm -hmm. and begins to disperse and, and go to its functionality. Mm -hmm. The pellets that you use, you put directly into the interior of the body. Yeah, we, and there's a in, procedure in the for fat. doing that. It's put in the body fat of, of, of the hip or the abdomen, or the, the hip. Uh, so there's no pre-metabolizing process. Right. So what happens then is it's already in the body and the body then begins to utilize this natural hormone, not right. a synthetic not hormone. A synthetic in a delivery system that's maximized for optimal uh, efficiency and delivery. And, and to actually uh, adjust itself to you, not like an insulin pump adjusts itself with a computer, but your own little, your own little control. When you're working out, you need a lot of estrogen and testosterone. When you're having sex, you need a lot of estrogen and testosterone. You're moving fast, your blood flow's going, but when you're sleeping, you don't need as much. Right. You're not using it up. So, so it's, it self regulates. It's a reservoir, it, and you go pick it up. It's an on demand system that's mm -hmm. keyed to your individual body. Right. And it's a somewhat time release because of that. It's not like contact pills that have those little balls that are time released mm -hmm. in your stomach. Mm -hmm. It's time released because it's surrounded by little blood vessels mm -hmm. that pick up a certain amount all the time. So it's and kind of an osmosis process. It just yeah. flows through the, the yeah. cell structures. It flows through the fat that's. It has to be in fat. If you have right. no fat, I can't put pellets in. But oh, yes. oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're have safe. some fat. Yeah. yeah. So so we put them in an area of fat. So you can't liposuction yourself to death because don't know where I'd go. Mm -hmm. So th that's how it dissolves. They're all lip. All hormones are lipid soluble. Mm -hmm. So they dissolve through the fat right into the bloodstream. So there is no change in that hormone when it does that. It's a lot like your ovary used to do. Make estrogen and testosterone and send it out. It's probably better because it's not up and down every month. Mm -hmm. So, but it sends it out directly into the blood. We want to be like we used to feel. It's healthier. It feels better. Then I really believe that the next best is vaginal. And we do have bioidentical 
tablets or sublingual, that's, that would be my next choice of mm -hmm. delivery systems. Mm -hmm. But the kind of vaginal tablets we use are bioidentical little tablets or suppositories. They are delivered once a day, generally at night before you go to bed, and they are put into the vagina. And in the old days, we used to put them into the rectum because we didn't know the vagina would work like that. Mm -hmm. And you can also have them in your cheek. They don't change as much as the other delivery systems. So next to pellets, that's my, my next favorite. And the other thing is, don't take progesterone, uh, don't, excuse me, don't take testosterone through the cheek or under the tongue because 90% of the people that take that get nothing. I do their blood tests. They absorb their estradiol. They absorb their progesterone. They cannot absorb testosterone that way. So you're just wasting your money. So they say, oh, testosterone doesn't work for me mm -hmm. because they've tried it that way. I say, well, just give me a chance. What about a, uh, an I am shot? The I am shots are not bioidentical. So, and, and in okay. women, testosterone shots um, are placed into the muscle and they have a peak. They do this. Yeah. Pellets are more like slowly active, stay up, and then slowly come down. So a shot is every two weeks or every month, they go up and down, so they feel terrible in these two areas mm -hmm. until it's up here. They feel good for a few days and then it comes down. So in that delivery system, it's too variable, and it's testosterone cyprinate or it's testosterone ethanate, and it lasts, may last a month, right. but it's not the same thing every day. So, right. so the half-life will cause things to fluctuate. And it makes people really greasy, women really greasy and hairy, and so I'm not really fond of that one. Okay. So what we've been talking about today involves various different methodologies for delivering hormones and two different types of hormones. The synthetic hormones that you would take in a pill or a tablet that you would swallow into your stomach and the natural hormones that can be delivered uh, sublingually uh, through a patch, a vaginal insertion, or through the method that you use, which is to insert it. Uh, you make a small slice in the, the skin. A small slice. Like a, a two millimeter slice. Two millimeters. It's not like this. <laughs> yeah. Small slice. No, it's like... And like my little finger, it's like that. Put a little metal tube in and put those pellets in through the tube. It's like a straw. Put about it in. the size of a soda straw. Mm -hmm. And then seal that back up. Take the straw out, leave the pellets in, put a strip over and it, no stitches. And then over four months for women and six months typically for men, mm -hmm. that chemical is in your body. It is an on-demand system. It is a natural system. And you don't have the mood swings. You don't have the functionality swings that you have with the other delivery systems. It's not really a chemical, but that's okay. It's a pure hormone. Pure hormone. <laughs> it's made from soy the, and yams. The scientists in the lab. Yes, of course. <laughs> so I guess the end message is think about these things and talk to your physician about what you are trying to achieve, about what your health concerns are, and have this information about the delivery system so that you can discuss that with your doctor. And in the news today is patches are healthier than pills. So they've made one step toward really what we've always known, that anything that's not oral is safer for women to take okay. in terms of hormones. So if you have any questions or comments about this program, you can email us at podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can contact me at my uh, blog, brettnewcomb.com. And if you want more information about bioidentical hormone pellets, visit our website, biobalancehealth.com, or call us at 314-993-0963.